All right, we're finally going to get to some of the fishing we did with Brian on Rayburn here a couple of weeks ago. But before we go there, by the way, I, he actually got the net out for me on one. But before we go there, I saw something in what he was doing, specifically the knot he was tying, that, I, that really made a difference on that little bitty bait with the action. So I wanted him to demonstrate it, and here it is. So I have fished for, well, I lied my first bass tournament. I told him I was 16, I was 15. And I've been walking the creek, Foosh Creek in Little Rock, Arkansas, from the time my mom would let me out of the house. And I tie a Palomar, what did you call this? Alberta's the one line to line? Alberto's the one I use the most of the time. Yeah, and then there's one other knot I tie that I don't know the name of. But Brian ties, and we mentioned it earlier, I don't know if it's in this video or another video, because there's a bunch of videos from us fishing together today. He ties a loop knot on that little tungsten head to get more action. Oh yeah, it shakes the hook and everything, dude. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Let's that, A hook is literally beaten back. I don't know how to tie a loop knot, so I've asked him to demonstrate how to tie a loop knot right We here. use the same loop knot even on big mono for big top waters, 20 pound line, everything, and it doesn't, it's never going to be a problem. I say us because I grew up around Jim Tut and he and I both have been using the same loop knot for a long time. You start off by just tying a real quick overhand knot in your line, like that. <clears throat> Put the Tag in through the hole. Pull that little loop knot down there where all I've done is spin the line above the loop knot. There's okay, the yeah, there's your loop. Got you. Put it down next to the eye and then spin the line. Just It's just like a clinch knot. And then put it through that little knot and to the inside of it. works through the both of them and you pull it down close to where you want it it's real easy it's very very it is easy. a simple it's little a knot very it? very strong knot um, I simply don't remember it failing me and I mean I've pulled hooks straight with it over the years and I mean, it's very strong awesome I don't, I don't understand how it can be that strong. But I actually is. think I can tie that now. Guys, I edited that the best I could, but uh, I'm going to give you another view of that and see if they can make it a little bit easier to see. So, first he just ties an overhand loop knot, right? Pulls it down. Then he goes through the eye of the lure. Now, interestingly, online I saw two different ways of doing this. I saw several guys who would take and twist the line there Brian twists the line above the loop knot. So he'll take it above the loop knot, go two or three times around. I'm going to go three times around. And then he simply goes right back through the loop knot and pulls it tight. And that's the loop knot. You can see I made a really big loop there, but you can make that loop whatever size you want when you loop when you tighten it down. So it's a really simple knot, and I'll tell you, it, I pulled and pulled. This is 20 pound cigar smackdown. He said he did. He actually said in another part of the video he has not historically used it on braid, but it's pretty obvious to me based upon that. And I think I'm going to start using that knot quite a bit more because on any lure, that's just going to give you more freedom. Now I'm not going to make the loop that big. I'm going to make it something more akin to that. But uh, that's a basic loop knot, and it seems to be very, very strong. So it's just a few minutes before noon here, and as it got hotter and got stiller, Brian got where he was really calling his shots, and he would say, all right, that, there, here they come. And in this scenario, we saw about six or seven fish come up off the bottom. And, I mean, I watched this fish come. He points to it right there. I watched this fish come all the way up and just smoke my bait right there. And uh, it's on. And now, this is really the only good fish we caught, but we caught a whole bunch of fish. So, here we go. This one takes a little while. Ready? 
Listen to it sing. It goes school up in here. Oh, I love that noise. There was a school and about 20 came through there. That's how quick it gets on. Little bitty bait, little bitty tackle. Hole and hot water. Hole and hot. What's the water temp right there, Brian? 87, 71 in the middle of the lake. 87. 10 minutes till high noon. 40.4 feet of water. This one is not giving up. Oh, there's my leader. Here we go, here we go. Oh, not <laughs> bad. Now, that fish is not going to have very long. Good job, my brother. Proud of you. Look at that big boy. I look at where that school went because they are all together. They're still here. There we go. A little bitty six cents bait, Brian was talking about. Dandy. A dandy. Fish him. Four and three quarters. Oh, yeah. At least. Maybe five. five maybe, maybe. Thank you, brother. Get back down there and hunt. Go over the last gosh 20 plus years i've fished with brian a bunch of times and this is new this moving kind of the mike iconelli set the hook and then move away from the fist physically is something i've never seen him do before and we talked about it and i thought i had it on camera but i don't basically what he said was he's lost enough fish with that little tiny open hook and that light rod that he wants to really make sure he gets a long he doesn't want to snap hook them right you don't want to pop that line but he wants to make sure he gets a really good hook set in him uh, and a long pull on him. That's why he takes several steps when he gets a bite. And um, he caught, I think he caught every one that bit doing that, uh, this day. I don't think he lost a single fish. Although that's not the prettiest landing job, Brian. So it's about 106. And as you can tell, there is not a breath of wind out there. And I was literally burning up, so I put my life jacket on. And I'm like, well... You know, I'm going to cool off, so I uh, waited till I got Brian's attention, gave him a slew, and exited. man that's a wrap at Riper. thanks for going out with me hey man enjoyed it always do um you pretty much described this you said we're gonna start on some shallow fish if the if the brim spawn's still going on but you didn't think it would be but it was worth trying and then you said it's gonna be slow until about 10 30. and you it you look and i don't know if i've got this on film but at 10 34 you looked at the graph and you said it's about to start happening and then it was steady from then on yeah it's a heat of the day deal right now. I really can't explain that. Um, I have caught the fish like we were catching them from first light, but there's still a, a really big mold before it gets going hard. Yeah. You know? well, I don't know how many we caught. Our, and now, you did say normally you're catching two big fish a day. Usually. But today we had one. You, you had one, looked like a pretty good one, wacky that you didn't catch. Yeah. A couple couple of them I think we were around some really big fish uh, more than some days but I think we've, we've had five eight ten to we probably had 13 14 pounds that's fine nothing spectacular but also coming off the water before it gets too hot yeah actually we caught more fish in the last hour than we caught the first hour by a long shot oh yeah so we could still be catching if we want to yep all on you know like tackle soft pond oh yeah it's hard to imagine that you, it's just a match the hatch deal on these small baits. Yeah. I mean, I fully expect it will be on the um, the 3.3 and then the 3.8 and then just on up as it goes. I, I do throw those occasionally right now, and and they just 
they just don't work. And you're really into the quarter ounce. Have you gone to the three eighths to see if they react better when it's moving real fast? Yeah, when I'm by myself, I have three out there and they're two quarters and three eighths. And when I get down to that really deep water, I'll put that small bait on that three eighths and it will work. But it's only going to work well in certain conditions for the fish are really grouped up and competitive. When they're mealy mouthed and follow you around, all that stuff, you pretty much got to have the smaller one. And it's funny what he said there. Uh, that that one spot we hit, and by the way, we fish from all the way up Ash, all, all the way around north of the forest. So we covered, now we didn't fish all that, but we ran a lot of water. But that one spot, when you saw how those fish set up, so what it was, was it was right on a break. And there were about there was some bait out scattered, but there were about five or six obvious fish there. And for you to get excited, you want to see a little bit of red. Oh yeah, yep. And and what I'm talking about is in that return, Brian wants to see some red in that return. And the way I set up my my live scope is on the blue. I use the blue background color. Yep. It's kind of comes over from my days with Lawrence a long time ago. It was blue then, you know, and it gives. It kind of introduces two colors, if you know. So you can remember yellow, the background mm -hmm. blue, and then orange. Well, some of the other colors, they're just different intensities of the same color. Right. Now, lava, Caribbean, rusted steel, and blue will all have three distinctly different colors when you get to the point. And, and that density or that hard orange... You know, it's just telling you that's a that's a better fish out there. It's a thicker fish. Yeah, it's a bigger mass. Yeah, it, it really, really makes a difference for me. Um, having your unit set up to where you understand it is what's important. And if it's not set up that way, even changing the depth or range, you know, really bothers me. Well, and that goes back to something we talked about. I mean, you've spent over 90 days on the water through half a year. God day. Yeah, got, well, guide days, right, plus your personal fishing. I'm fishing a lot more than I used to by myself because I'm really enjoying some of the new... Um, yeah, new technology. New things. Yeah, that are but, but my point is, the only way to get really comfortable with what size a fish is, where they're set up where you can catch them, is just wheel time. It's spending time looking at those fish. Pretty much. Like a cast out. N not only that, but yeah, and being fortunate enough to, out of all that time that you spend, to have some days where you where you're in a target rich environment and you see a lot of different things and um you're trying to say it's good to be on river man it really is i love this <laughs> lake i've loved it since i was in you know before college you know that yeah. had a had a map of this lake on my college dorm room wall okay I had a picture of a girl okay yeah well i mean i had a map of this lake yeah you know, i'm not married yet. <laughs> never have been but the point is Yes, um, it, it's the lake, in my opinion, is extremely heavily fished, especially um, in the past two or three, four years. And it's challenging to stay on the fish every day, but if you use all the technology at your fingertips and don't get in a rut, and don't be afraid to fish in really deep water, um, there's just new avenues to fish every day. So, and that, you guys know, I've, I've had a lot of guys reach out over the years for guide trips here on Rayburn, and Brian's my go-to guy, and that's why he spends more time. Now, you probably don't spend the most time guiding on the lake, but I think you spend the most time guiding for bass. Well, There's a lot of full-time for... crappie guides, right? Yeah, but... yeah. Um, and, they, and they do have a long season. Um, I personally don't know other full-time bass guides. I know there's probably two or three. Um Maybe four or five for all I know. I just don't know. I don't yeah, know them. yeah. Um, Hard to meet them. Full time that right. are this lake. And, and I'll, I work at, at Toledo Bend some, about 15 days a year, 20, something like that. Usually has to do with optimal conditions or if I've been over there for some reason and locate a good school of fish or it's just in better shape than here. And common situation is when this lake is extremely windy and people are from out of town they need to go fishing because they're you know they're here at that particular time and we get a lot of wind um there's some good stuff Toledo on this side Bend, of Toledo. you can yeah. fish a lot of areas right. over there that you're just not going to feel the same pressure of you know bad weather wind you know indian creek to be you know 
yeah, as an yeah, example. Yeah. It just goes all, six all miles, over the right. place and, yeah. and you can get out of the woods. All right, guys, so I'll put Brian's contact information down below in the description, or you can always reach out to me at kinsmithfishing at outlook.com, and, and I'll connect you. But, uh, again, fun times, and i got to go figure out why I got water in the floor in Zavala. we got air conditioning. Today, so. I had a great time, man. You too, brother.